Hi, I'm Nuno from Reverend Tales, a prog metal band from Portugal, and you are watching Antichrist Magazine. Reverend Tales. The meaning behind this band name isn't more than our songs and the stories that each one of them contains. These songs were the, the bedrock of the band. We had been working on them in the aftermath of previous projects we played on. Uh, we have the search for the right voice that led us to Raquel Nunes. And uh, we completed the lineup with, uh, with Raquel. Uh, so the five of us gathered a big list of names to choose from. Most of them weren't available. And this one uh, seemed the right, uh, the right choice because it's based on the stories we tell in our lyrics and uh, our music. Visceral is a record that we're really proud of. Um, you can get it on reverendtales.bandcamp.com. Took a, actually took a long time to record. It was quite a hard process, but uh, we gave a lot of love and passion about the songs and we took our time to think about it and how we wanted to record them and all of it, all the details. So um, we are really proud of what we achieved in Visceral. Hope you enjoy it too. Well, uh, about the lyrics and that I that I wrote for Visual album, I must say um, that all the content uh, don't have any concrete theme about it that could explain some sort of history. All the lyrics um, are there to anyone interpret uh, freely. In otherwise, uh, they also have, uh, of course, um, their own identity. Uh, with with inspiration moments without any targeted theme attached into it, um, is is a travel uh, that plays um, with our self uh, imagination, uh, with some direct and crude points. Uh, as many may think, our album don't have any conceptual context, but uh, required all dedication and effort. But in it, as any other work we do in the band, um, and my own hopes is that uh, the sound reach uh, the heart uh, and the soul of our fans. Regarding the design, we worked with uh, João Diogo, who has worked with some of our favorite bands like Moonspell and uh, Bizarre Locomotiva. Um, we sent him uh, the record and the lyrics and gave him complete and total freedom for him to do his magic. I'm a big fan of his artwork. Um, and, um, and he surprised us with, uh, well, I wasn't expecting less of what we got from him, uh, but it was really good to, to work and we enjoy to give freedom, to have freedom and to give freedom to the people that work with us. So it was, um, a marriage made in heaven. We already knew Ivo Salgado, the man behind Amazing, from booking gigs and festivals. He listened to Visual soon after we finished the record and was the first person to show a great excitement about Visual and wanting to publish it. Although we received offers from other labels, we decided to advance with Amazing. They have been supporting us since the very first day and the friendship developed with time. Yes, it is important to have a, a record label behind you, mostly if you are a new and emergent band like we are. I would say that bands like Nine Inch Nails or Radiohead that can do um, launches like In Rainbows, uh, it's because they, they, they already have their audience and their fans 
which is not our case. So uh, it is important to have someone uh, backing you up with contacts, reaching, uh, reaching more websites, more people. We had official release gig of a record visual scheduled to be held in a club in the Lisbon area around March. We were eager to play, but it had to be postponed due to the pandemic. A metal festival in central Portugal was also cancelled. Other gigs we were already planning with fellow metal bands didn't get to happen. We would love to play these songs at some big stages in 2021, we hope, for example at Vagos Metal Fest, that we consider the best metal festival in Portugal. That I recall, no, <laughs> honestly, uh, but could happen. Uh, unfortunately, they can't control everything uh, on stage. And uh, if something goes wrong, um, must be in the way that uh, we could laugh about it after show. <laughs> Uh, regarding um, new music, I will show you a couple of uh, Portuguese bands that I enjoy quite a lot. Uh, the first one is uh, Nevoa, which is a black metal band. Um, I have both of uh, their records, the other one in vinyl. Really enjoy them. Uh, check them out. They're launching a new album pretty soon. Uh, another one is the second album by Neil, Ailment. Uh, really good band, uh, it's from the drummer of Wells Valley, another very interesting Portuguese band. Um, so please check this out. Um, one more is uh, Her Name Is Fire, I actually have their two records, this is the second one, a bit more on the rock side. Um, if you like Queens of the Stone Age, most likely you like these guys, really, really, really interesting. Um, and the last one, um, Omitir, um, another uh, black metal band from Portugal, um, they haven't launched anything in quite some time, um, this one has a lot in the Portuguese roots, uh, so really enjoy this uh, record and check them out too. Let's hope the impact of the pandemic is not permanent by closing venues and making people in the music business, especially in the underground, just give up. On the positive side, the confinement period was certainly used by most musicians to invest in the creative process and compose. It was our case, by the way. That may lead, we hope, to a post-pandemic boom of new, great music. question uh, I have to put in three uh, ways um, so I can explain my point of view to you um, first the scene itself is not much uh, quiz uh, but in the last uh, 10 years all general bands uh, became more uh, strong and more professional in all the ways possible uh, in our scene, um, some give up um, to the lack of gigs, uh, financial problems or lack of support. So some disappear and others try harder to keep our scene alive, just, uh, just like a cycle of everything uh, um, in life. Second... Uh, in our country, uh, most of the bands are concentrated in the capital uh, or north side of the country. Um, just, like, uh, just like in other countries, we also have um, to some major festivals to support um, the hold and, and the new coming bands such as um, VOA. Vagos Open Air, Barruzelas uh, Festival, Moita Metal Fest, uh, Chapada na Tromba, uh, and others. 
and this festival just join our local bands with the opportunity uh, to open for worldwide bands. Third and the last, I live in Barreiro, south side of Lisbon, and in my location, since the early uh, 80s, we have a good hand full of bands such as the Black Cross, the fathers of Portuguese black metal, um, Elegion, um, and West Boulevard, just name a few, a few examples. We have also from um, mid 80s to mid 90s a good overhaul uh, punk scene. Uh, now, in um, 2000, we got an exponential grow in, in, in bands. But since 2015, um, um, the scene uh, became more poor and poor. Nowadays, uh, we have three or four bands, uh, none of them with a, with a big name and, and some projects. Plans for the future? Um, well, it depends a lot on how the pandemics go uh, moving forward. Um, we hope that uh, we can do do some summer 2021 gigs. We have uh, one booked for, well, the biggest Portuguese metal festival, which is Vagos Metal Fest, um, which we're really excited to play because there will be bands like Dimo Borgir, uh, Emperor. Um, but let's see how, how things go with the pandemic. Uh, apart from that, um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot, so it's very hard for us to rehearse. Uh, with all the lockdowns that have been happening and we come from different even different cities so it doesn't make it easy to to rehearse um, but once things come down we'll we'll continue to compose our uh, second record <laughs>